My name is Teresa Wills. I'm an assistant professor at George Mason University, and I teach in the math specialist program. Our program includes kind of two elements, which I think will apply to whatever it is you're teaching. Um, there's courses in leadership, which are highly discussion courses, big projects do, a lot of controversial issues, um, and just a lot of conversation. We also have math content courses, which is kind of that opposite side of the pedagogical spectrum where we have a lot more um, you know, mathy things, representations, making connections between uh, a formula and a model. And uh, so there's a lot of those components. You'll see examples in my videos in today's PD about how you can um, access student learning in both styles of teaching. So glad you're here. Um, I would like to start off with my number one strategy for saving you time and flow of your lesson. Uh, and that is at the very bottom of our slideshow. So if you would come all the way down to slide 56. This is the virtual parking lot and it's a cumulative slide. As you can see, I've had three other professional developments and I just keep all the questions from other sessions in the slides above in case someone else has the same question. So in this virtual parking lot, at any time today throughout our PD, if you have a burning question, but it might not be the appropriate time to ask, um, or it might derail your lesson, uh, go ahead and pop it in the virtual parking lot. I will address these at the very end of the session. This can save you a lot of time and flow of your lesson, uh, simply because I think we've all been there before where we are having a great discussion we have students who are engaged and they're, they're giving their responses. It's really rich. And someone raises their hand and says, when is the homework due? And you're like, oh, that totally derailed it. So this is a place for you to write those and use those in your teaching as well. All right, we're going to head right back up to the very top again. And you can join me on slide two. If you're just joining us, welcome. We are in the Google Slides, and we are starting now on slide two. Uh, these are just kind of some testimonies after one semester um, in the program. Uh, if you are working with administrators, uh, other peer teachers, people who are not so sure about moving online, uh, sometimes just kind of hearing testimonies from other folks can be a nice motivational factor. So use these however you like. And slide three is my goal for you. Come on down to slide three. My goal for you is to do what you're already doing. Just do it online. We're not recreating uh, everything that you've ever known for teaching. Um, we are just moving it into a, an accessible platform for distance interaction. And that's really what I'm going to show you how to do today. And I'll stress that quality online learning requires excellent pedagogy. Uh, the teacher cannot be replaced by a computer. Your teaching strategies are the heart of what makes this good. So keep that in mind. Slide four is um, our agenda of some of the strategies that we're going to be doing. Um, it's also a link to videos, and I'm going to keep this updated as I have more available. And slide five is our ground rules. This slide is in every single one of my classes. Um, it's important that I spend 30 seconds reading these off at the beginning of each class. It keeps my students um, engaged and prepared, and it keeps them actually um, interacting with one another. So I'll say it to you also. Make sure you put away all your distractions. This is highly interactive, and we need everyone uh, focused and ready to learn. I am recording this session for public view, so reduce or eliminate your background noise. Make sure you do all assignments and readings before class. Use your mic in small and in whole groups. Be patient and professional. Use your away message whenever you're away from your keyboard. Don't drive while in Collaborate Ultra, and update your profile picture as often as you can. The profile picture is something in Blackboard Collaborate 
We're not going to focus too much on it today. Um, I'll create a video about how to actually change it and why it's important, but it's great for building community. We don't use the same professional photo in my classes. We often use really silly photos or photos of someone in a loved one or a new puppy, something that's going to build to our classroom community. So since we don't have the few minutes to have informal conversation at the beginning of classes, um, you know, about who has a new baby or who has a puppy or, you know, who's going on a vacation, we see those through the images. So that's really important to build in classroom community. Slide six is a slide taken directly out of one of my classes. It's a math specialist networking slide. Uh, it has upcoming conferences and links to social media. And this is also cumulative. So as soon as somebody puts uh, a URL up here or a link up here or a hashtag, it's there for every class and we just add on to it. So slide seven is one that's going to apply to you all. This has been uh, what other folks who've joined the PD have placed on here. Feel free to add your own hashtags, your own links to virtual conferences or groups and social media who you're following. And you can just add right to this. You can, you know, hit the return button and add here. You can even grab a text box and add it in. And once you're ready to move on, come on down to slide eight. You'll probably notice that you're seeing these little bubbles, these avatars, move in between the slides. And I use that for accountability purposes, just to see what slides my students are on and if everyone is actively moving, if they're on the same slide as me. Uh, so that's just a little added bonus of Google Slides. Slide eight are successes and celebrations. It's important that this is in every single class you do because it's gonna build that community uh, that otherwise without community kind of makes online learning very sterile and feeling isolated. So on this uh, page, you can either grab a text box or you can use one that I'm gonna put out here. I'm gonna just put the word here and Type in, what are you celebrating today? What successes have happened in your life? These successes can be professional or personal. If you'd like to include your name or photo, that would be encouraged. Personally, I'm celebrating Pi Day. And if you're looking for the text box, it's in one of the Google um, tools underneath the file, edit, view, insert. And it looks like a little T surrounded by a square. Someone wrote that they are home with their husband for two weeks and they normally work away from each other. Uh, what are you excited about with uh, this extra time with your loved one? Go ahead and turn on your microphone and let us know. Hi, Cheryl. We can hear you now. Is that yours? Did you want to tell us a little bit about it? Yes, I'm excited to be home with my kids and 
my husband. Um, we're out a couple weeks. Wonderful. Thank you for sharing. Uh, somebody just put in there a really exciting thing that their son is getting into the first choice for college. Hello, who are you? And tell us a little bit more about that. Some people are still navigating the um, the two windows that we use, the Blackboard Collaborate that uses the microphone feature and Google Slides. I have a video about how to manage multiple windows, um, but no worries here. We have a lot of, a lot of learning with Grace, so um, no stress if, if you're having trouble with that. Uh, someone is it looks like at their school at Bishop O'Connell. Um, we've had a couple folks um, from your school join us. Um, are you here uh, by yourself or are you here with multiple uh, people listening in? Ah, here by yourself. Thank you for letting us know. Uh, I can't hear you yet. And um, oh, if that's Anthony, I just saw your microphone pop on. Go ahead and talk. Oh, wow. Hi. 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 We can hear you. Can you hear me? We can hear you. There's a little bit of feedback, um, but uh, glad you're here. Uh, thanks for joining us. We um, have had several teachers from your school join us in previous PD? Yes, I um, <laughs> My son got in his first, year, uh, first choice in college, mm -hmm. so we are definitely excited about that. Uh, the feedback that, that you're hearing is uh, my wife, she's also online, <laughs> and we're trying to uh, use the platform efficiently. Right, and um, that's that's pretty common at first um, to hear some feedback and other audio things. I'll try and make a couple of videos that troubleshoot that for folks. Uh, Linda, go ahead. Hi, um, I joined a couple of minutes after you started and I, I'm having trouble. All I can see is the screen that says, welcome, Teresa will return 10 minutes before the session begins. Ah, well, so uh, you'll want to open the other link from your email into our Google Slides, but just to make it a little bit oh. easier, I'm going to post it here in the chat for you. If you click that link, that's where we do the most uh, majority of our instruction. Thank you. Yes, appreciate sure it. Sure thing. All right, folks, so this successes and celebration slide, uh, usually I'll have about three to four students share something that they wrote on there to elaborate a little bit more. One nice thing you uh, are able to do as an instructor is you can kind of scan all the different successes and celebrations that your students put up there. You might find the one student who is not really a talker in your class, but all of a sudden wrote something great on the slide, and you might call on that student to elaborate. Or maybe somebody um, you know, is really excited because grandma is coming um, and uh, grandma's going to babysit them during the day for the next couple weeks. Um, and so that's a really big thing for that student, so I might have that student share. But mostly you get to decide who shares and get the biggest bang for your buck. So it's a great little strategy for that. All right, let's get right into things you can use in your classroom. Come join me on slide nine. This is an example of an ONA space strategy where I want you all to do all the work. It's not me who's doing the work. Um, so it's very student centered. Grab one of those text boxes. I can see several uh, people already starting. 
put your name in it and then drag it down to this number line. If this is a continuation, where are you? So you can just move your text box out of the red zone and put it anywhere in the white. And we will be patient with you as you learn to move your text box. Students usually get the hang of this after the first session. And once you have moved your uh, name, think about how you could use this in your content area. And then uh, go ahead and turn on your microphone and tell us how might you use this continuum and moving the text boxes in your content. Right now I'm studying probability in one of my classes, and so I put on one side um, impossible and the other side uh, always going to happen. And I have students put situations in the little boxes and move them around. So pizza on Friday gets really, really close to the always going to happen. Um, Things like, is there going to be a full moon tonight, is going to go down on the not likely, uh, depending on the phases, but the students come up with their own ideas. Who else has an idea about how you can use this in your content area? might be a good way to show for, them, for like them to show how confident they're feeling in getting their head wrapped around a concept. Awesome. So kind of checking in with their confidence level. That is a great way of, of using this. For adults, oftentimes we um, are talking politics with one another. And you might have two opposite ends of thinking about a political thing, and most people will fall somewhere in between. Um, so I can see direct applications into social studies um, or anything where you're debating two sides of it. Alrighty, uh, on slide 10 is uh, the first breakout room that we're going to do. This slide is here mostly for me. Um, but my students have access to it also. This slide lets me know how do I plan on putting my groups together, about how long do I want this activity to last, and the direction spelled out because sometimes I just kind of have a empty brain when I'm explaining directions, so I have them there also for my students to read. If I'm going to have them grouped certain ways, I've got the groupings on the right hand side also. So this slide is mostly here for me, but it's great for students to go back to. We're about to move into breakout rooms. Um, I'd like you to experience what it's like to be in a small room with three to five other folks. Once you're in that breakout room, I'm going to ask that you all turn on your microphone so you can hear each other because this will be a collaborative activity. You're going to move down to a slide, depending on what group you're in. So if you take a peek at the purple slide, for example, your group will put their names at the very top. And you'll start to have discussions. How are your situations different? How are your needs similar? And find a clip art image from the web that depicts the classroom pedagogy that you want to continue in your online instruction. You'll notice that there's ample room for lots of writing and lots of pictures. So once you're in your group, go ahead and uh, start filling those in. But most importantly, make sure you turn on your microphones uh, so that people can hear you. Again, your microphone and group number can be found in Collaborate. That's the tab with the little purple chevrons on it. And I'm going to set up breakout windows now.
Wanda, go ahead. Wanda, did you have a question before we started? Okay. Oh, I was just testing to see. I understood ah. you because I had tried to talk earlier, but um, no one could hear me. But I think I got it now. Thank you. You got it. Thank you. All right. Here's your breakout rooms. my room yep how do i locate mine welcome group you one you all are on the purple slides purple let's see my name that's why welcome group morning. two Okay. Good. Thank you. Good morning. Hi, Wanda. I can hear you. Uh, Linda and Rosanna, if you um, are able to turn on your microphone, um, and then you all are on the blue slides. Okay. Um, just want to make sure your microphones are on. Hello, Group 3. Thanks, Don, for supporting everyone. Hi. And uh, you all are on the green sides. Okay, thank you. Yeah, this is Giovanna. Can anybody hear me in group four? Hi, Giovanna. I can hear you. I uh, just wanted to let you all know that you are group four and you're on the yellow slides. Thank you. Hello, group two. I noticed, Linda, your hand was up. Did you have a question for me? Yes. Um, I, I'm in the group, and I have the audio, but I still haven't been a, could, I was wondering, could you put that link, the other link back up to the slides Absolutely. for a minute? Absolutely. There you go. <laughs> Thank you. You're I'll click welcome. on that. Yep, I'm there. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Wanda, this is Linda. Can you tell me what, what, hi, can you tell me what slide we're looking at again? Oh, we are blue, so click on the blue, page 12. Oh. Going on. I mean, knock the wood. We're ahead of the curve, so that's, that's always a blessing. Yeah, I know, definitely. And that's the thing, like, with elementary, like, we're, start, we're moving towards one-to-one, -one, but we're not one-to-one -one yet. Right. So we like were scrambling yesterday because um, which in half of my class was already missing and it was like, OK, they could have like mentioned, hey, we have a plan to do this and we could have sent something home Thursday when all of our students were there. Um, yeah, so, yeah, this has been very yeah. difficult because we were yeah. told to get packets and stuff like that ready. And for students who don't have one to one, uh, because we don't have a lot of Internet in this area. And so. We didn't meet and I wasn't able to send the stuff. Uh, anyway, it's, yes, it's prevented, it's presented a lot of difficulties, even in the, the online region, because of some of our students, a good portion of our students don't have access to internet because of where they live in the mountains or in rural areas. Yes, definitely. Yeah, so we, as a team, scan, we sent a packet home, but we scanned the packet as well to post it to Dojo.
have a line through it. If you click on that, you can turn your mic on. Um, so I also, I'm an online student right now through JMU, and I'm, I'm working on my master's in mathematics education, <clears throat> but I would absolutely love to teach math online, completely online, someday. Um, I, right now, it's just trying to figure out a way to, um, like have a tablet or have some type of interface. Orange County is right in the middle of Virginia and it's very rural here. So a lot of my kids have sketchy um, online access. So that's our challenges right now. Yeah. That's somewhat of the issue for um, Arlington. Um, for most of my school, students have online access, but um, there are a lot of students who don't. Mm -hmm. So um, right now, our um, our IT um, department is trying to get MiFi access where they can deliver um, hotspots to students. Oh, um, yeah. But I don't have much faith in that happening. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So we had to put together large packets, I mean, paper, like you wouldn't believe, for our kids for extended closure. And, you know, you work so hard to go paperless and have so many different opportunities to have, you know, Google Docs and everything. And now with the closures, we also are kind of in that same boat where a lot of kids need hotspots or something. and They, they don't have that access right now. Yeah. Um Three through five for us is on online learning right now. Well, our version of it, because most of us have not done much with it. And K through two, we <coughs> see their screens. Yeah. So it's very important for me to see as to, and guide them as to where they're able to find the settings. Right. And which screen they are on. So that's going to be my biggest challenge. No, I, I'm, I'm a tech ed teacher, so I have um, my IB students are currently trying to complete a project for submission, which the due date was supposed to be the 27th of March. So we're hoping IB will give us an extension to April. Uh -huh. So trying to, trying, to, trying to manage 17 different projects, it's going to be interesting. <laughs> oh, yes. Um, has anybody uh, had to uh, have uh, the SOLs that they have to comply with? Yeah, that, ours was supposed, uh, was supposed to happen on Monday and Tuesday, in fact. Okay. Well, that's where it's weird. Hi, there, Group One. This is Teresa. Um, I have uh, abilities as a moderator to move into some of the different rooms. Um, and so it's just listening to your incredible conversation. Um, and you've got a lot of great things on your slide. Uh, who here knows how to copy and paste clip our images from the web? Okay. All of us. Awesome. Uh, go ahead and see how many great images you can put on slide 11. Okay. Oh. <laughs> what are we looking for? What images that best depict the classroom? You, you are know. welcome to sit there and play. Oh, and Teresa, while we're doing this, is there any way we could type A and still C? Because when I switch back over to type, I can't see everybody. Yes, yeah, so that is definitely one of the challenges um, when you're using a web conferencing tool with Google Slides. Um, and some people have suggested that maybe I take the slides and put them into Collaborate, but I really like students to be able to have ownership. And so I don't want them to be my slides, I want them to be their slides. So we do have okay. these two windows or two tabs. Um, I would mm -hmm. recommend that after the session, you take a look at that video mm -hmm. for staggering windows. It's my best okay. suggestion, um, but I'm always up for other ideas. So if you think of anything, definitely let me know. Okay.
um, different. Well, we can keep that. Okay. We're at different school districts. I'm in Orange County. Hi there, Group 4. We have just about a minute left in our um, exploration. I know you've had amazing conversations. Uh, if you could take a minute and see if you know how to copy and paste clip art from the web into that third column, we're going to use clip art in our next activity. Um, so see if you are able to do that. Okie doke. Welcome back to the main room. I've pulled us all back together. So go ahead and turn off your microphone for our whole group. Welcome back. Go ahead and check your microphone. And then come join me on slide 17. Again, I'm going to watch the little avatar bubbles move down to see who is with me. Um, and when we're ready to move on. Awesome. All right, so this next activity is um, going to really work on not only were you with a small group and you discuss similarities, differences, and images, now you're going to be in a different group where you're going to read other folks' slides, see what they put on there, and you're actually going to kind of steal some of the stuff. We call this activity a steal and edit, um, and it really should be called collaborate and edit, um, but the kids really like that idea of steal. So you're going to go to other folks' slides, and if you really like something, you're going to copy and paste it onto your new slide. Um, if you join me on slide uh, 18, this is what your template looks like. And as a group, you're going to decide what would be your perfect world for online instruction. And you get to dream big here. And then you'll add text or images to the three boxes in the middle. What would it look like, sound like, feel like? And then you're going to repeat what you wrote in the top box. And this is going to be a summary of what you're hoping to get in online learning. So you're going to get new groups. The same thing as before, check what breakout room you're in and move to that slide. I'll be around to help out. Hi there, group one. You're on slide 18. Hello. 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 Hi there, group two. You will edit slide 19. OK. OK. 
Okay. The perfect world online instruction will allow students to I'm going to type my name up here. That's why I can see him in a couple of screens. Yeah, more cards do that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> hey, sweetie. Let me fix your head. Mm -hmm. I would like to see your beautiful face if that's okay. This is Labrador's curiosity. Um, mm -hmm. Maybe provide uh, peer feedback. Um, demonstrate learning. Sorry, what was that? It's a demonstrate learning. Like okay. some some form of assessment, whether it be. I figured that was the easy way to cover all forms of assessment, actually. <laughs> yeah. What would it look like? Is there anything else? Anything from the other slides that we can steal? Let's see. It looks like you have a big tongue. Do you like that little sensory nope. basket? So lots of fun stuff in there. Team two wrote some good stuff. Yeah. They got way further than Oh uh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Well, this is the A team. Yeah. Did you know that you could um also leave a note under your pillow if you really like sleeping in the basement? <laughs> if his child was having difficulties, we could definitely collaborate with them a little bit um, more. Yeah. Let's do a no, stick a picture in where it says what it would look like. Just went to the wrong person. The wrong person. Ah. That was good. What do you Sound like. Oh. Okay. It would sound like some music at Okay. I hope you. I have a lot of That was a picture about sharing ideas. <clears throat> what was that? The group just has a picture with sharing ideas. Yeah. Classroom without wall. Okay. Yeah. Mm hmm. I'm still trying to wrap my head around the mechanics of it. No, yeah, right, exactly. I think you know these. No. Breathe yeah. in. Breathe you out. probably wouldn't have as many distractions as, as you would in a normal setting. It's just because in the classroom, it's all about breathing. 
do you do these? feeding off of each other and you're interrupting so you have less distractions and behaviors. That's yeah. a lot of positive. There's coloring pages in there, the very bottom. Let's have the same classroom monitoring problems. Mm -hmm. feel like. It's clear. It's clear. What is it? Hmm. Yeah. Very different way of working. Oh, okay, so I want to put inclusive. Well, it's quiet in here. I know. Who wrote yeah. that? Safe and comfortable, I think, so that, you know, they they feel free to share their ideas. Thinking loudly. Twenty minutes. Hi there, Group Three. Looks like you are coming along. Is um, is everyone able to type on the screen? I know some some microphones aren't working, but hopefully everyone's able to add to this. Yep, I think so what we've kind of been talking and sharing um, and adding to the slide. Great. We're going to come together in about a minute. It's all right if your slides aren't done because I think that most people understand the pedagogical practice that I'm trying to show off here. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> all right, I'm going to be talking on here now. Okay. Welcome back, everyone. I've pulled you back into the main room. Okay. So go ahead and turn off your microphones. Okay. So I realize that not every group had finished, but I think as teachers, you are starting to see the pedagogical practice that's happening here. First of all, they're student-led. Um, it's not me lecturing. I'm uh, putting prompts that are going to lead to great discussion and lead to them uh, talking to one another. And then there's a place for uh, students to put either words or images so we have that accountability. Uh, there's different ways we could share out the slides. Sometimes uh, I will have students read exactly what they wrote. So they'd nominate one person from each group and they'd read their slide. Uh, and sometimes I do a gallery walk. Um, Different, different pedagogical reasons, which you all are, are teachers, so you can decide what you would like to do. Um, but if you would take a look at slide 24, I'm going to model what a gallery walk would look like in this environment, because it's a little different than just a regular share out. I like to offer multiple modalities, which means if you are someone who likes to type in the chat box, there's a place for you to talk. Your voice is heard. So you're welcome to type in there. If you're someone who feels very emotional about things and you love emojis, you can copy and paste these emojis and add them to slides that show off your emotions. If you like to use the comment box or just highlight really powerful words or statements, you can use those. So think of something that represents you. I'm going to use the emojis. I'm someone who likes to share my emotions to things. And you're going to copy and paste one of those and add it to somebody's slide for an area that you like. And what this is modeling is how we um, continue collaboration, that it's not just your slide. You're going to other slides and you're reading what they wrote and you're, you know, 
inferring that, you're changing your mind, you're uh, interacting. And I notice on slide 19 that they wrote the word happy. And so that is something I really connect with. I'm going to highlight that word. There's some that I'm still thinking about. So I've got the little thinking emoji. I'm not really sure how that would look like, but I'm thinking about it. I also typed something in the chat box. I said, nice job with the images. And while I realize that on your very first time working online, it might seem overwhelming the amount of options you have. And today might feel like you're drinking from a fire hose. But part of that is because I'm trying to show all these strategies that I do regularly in this short time. Um, it's the more you work with them, uh, the more you introduce just one at a time with your students. Before you know it, you'll have this classroom community that works in between all the modalities seamlessly. You can see a lot of great highlights, emojis, stars. Excellent. When you feel like you've got a handle on what the gallery walk looks like, come join me on slide 25 or 26. And this is another own a space strategy that's similar to an exit ticket. Uh, where I'd like you to pick one of the text boxes on either slide 25 or 26. And let me know what's one idea you gained from today that you're going to pledge to try. Wonderful, lots of great ideas. One uh, teaching tip I have for you, if you're going to do a slide like this, you can have a lot of space. And when you do, typically students will write more to fill up the space. Or you can have a teeny tiny space, like when you had your name on that first activity. Depending on the size of the space, students usually write the amount that there's room for. So nice little kind of teaching strategy there. All right, I'm going to sum up um, the, the rest of these slides here and move down to that virtual parking lot. On slide 27 is the introduction and pre-assessment of online tools. Today, I fully immersed you in this, um, in this PD. I didn't have a lot of um, teaching you the tools, uh, but this is a slide that I use on day one of all my classes. And what I'm doing here is not teaching the tools, I'm looking to see which students already know the tools. And then I use purposeful grouping after that. So when I group students together in breakout rooms, I might make sure that there's one tech savvy person in each group. Or sometimes I might choose to um, have tech abilities together to not intimidate other students. Uh, so this is a great way of kind of getting to know people and also seeing their you know, tech savviness and how to leverage that in the classroom. Uh, slide 28 shows uh, ways that you can do uh, more content-based 
instruction. This was an actual problem I had in my uh, fourth day of teaching online to a new cohort. I asked them to consider the pattern of these blocks and how many there might be in the 20th stage. Slide 29, they had a YouTube video that they could watch um, that would support them thinking about this problem. And slides 30 through 33 are actual student work. This is only after four days of teaching online. And you'll notice that students have taken pictures of their own work. They've used virtual manipulatives, screenshots, literal pictures of their calculator, <laughs> wherever they are in this learning. And I hope that these images inspire you that students actually can do this at a variety of levels. Um, and so, you know, let them show off what they know. And finally, I'm going to head down to the virtual parking lot at the end. I'd like to know what questions do you still have? I'm trying my best to answer questions when they're better answered in video, but I can also answer them here. You're welcome to turn on your microphone and ask questions. But mostly, I hope to have inspired you that online learning really can be interactive. Uh, it can be engaging. It can be very rigorous. Uh, it can foster collaboration. And I hope you gained a strategy today that you can use in your online teaching. Just wanted to know about how to use the Google uh, Classroom. The link you showed us, uh, I guess some, there was a person that asked how to join in and you put it up, but I didn't get a chance to click onto it. Absolutely. So when you make your Google Slides, um, at the uh, very top uh, right hand side of the screen, there's a yellow button that says share. Um, and you can actually share out the link. You can share out um, ability to edit the link or view only. Today, you all had access to edit the link. Um, and that's really important in building this collaboration uh, for students to be able to add to the slides. Um, in the videos I have up there, it shows exactly how to click on it and click edit and then copy and paste that link. Um, and I think that's in just about every video at the you know, 10 second marker. But if you uh, try it, it's confusing or you just want support with it, I'm happy to walk you through it. Is there a link that we click on to? Um, in the beginning when we start it, yeah. Yeah, on slide four are the links to the videos. Is that what you were mm -hmm. asking about? Um, I know in the beginning when we first started, uh, there was a person that couldn't um, um, join in because they needed to, you, you put the icon up on our right hand side and you gave the address where to click on so that we could, um, uh, I guess, share. Oh, there it is. Yeah. yeah. So I can do that in the chat box at any time. Let me share okay. my screen with you so you can see uh, what okay. I'm doing. So if you look and collaborate, um, I'm sharing my screen. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go up in the share area. I'm going to make sure it's edit. And I'm going to copy and paste this link. And I'm literally just going to come into the, the chat box and paste it there. So that's all I'm doing when people need the link. Someone okay, asked a question, cool. what are different online methods to assess student understanding of the content like quizzes and tests in the classroom? Um, I use a lot of collaborative quizzes and tests. Uh, some people that works with their standard pedagogy, sometimes uh, it doesn't. Uh, I like to use Google Docs and I have students share it with me, I might start off by putting the four questions of the quiz on the Google Docs. Um, and sending that out to my students, they make a copy of it, they put their name on it, and they share it with me. So I can make comments directly on their page. Um, they can see my comments, they can respond back if need be. Someone asked if it's okay to join another uh, training session. Absolutely. Every other day, I'm going to change up the training. 
So the recording on slide four of the previous training showed things like a tweet board sort and um, which one doesn't belong as pedagogical strategies. Today you all um, explored some different ones. And then uh, starting on Monday, I'll have completely new slides with, uh, you know, more samples of, of how to do this. You'll use the exact same link. Um, Currently, I'm using the same links for all of them. If I get more than 50 people in a class, I might change that, but for now, it's, it's all the same. Well, folks, I'm gonna stay on and answer any other questions, but if you don't have any, feel free to log off. I hope you're inspired. I hope you give uh, these synchronous uh, online teaching strategies a try. Um, Start off simple and, and uh, pick one thing that, that you're going to pledge to try and start with that. And be patient with your students as they learn these also. Well, Cheryl, let me be the first to say uh, thank you uh, uh, very much for sharing your knowledge with us and giving us new techniques. <laughs> you know, they always, can you hear me? Yep. Thank you uh, so much for, for sharing that. This is what I do every day. This is the um, one of the only kinds of instructions that I do. Occasionally I have a face-to-face -face class, but um, yeah, I'm, I'm happy to share. I want educators to realize that this is a possibility. Okay. Well, thank you very much, Teresa. You're very I welcome. I do appreciate it. Uh, some school systems are looking for um, certification, uh, certificates of completing the course. I've heard that many of them um, just need the uh, initial email saying the registration and they've been able to turn that in. If that doesn't work for you, send me an email. I'm happy to respond back um, with your specific needs. Teresa, yes. uh, so you do all of your grading, like do, do they ever come into school to take a test or all of your tests are online? Oh, everything's completely online because I teach students from different states and um, across the world. So um, everything is, is online in those classes. And you're not afraid that students would like use their notes for tests? Like I'm a math teacher. I, I think you are as well. Mm -hmm. um, and, um, you know, you. I just want to know that they know the content. Like, for instance, we were supposed to have a test on Monday, um, but school is closed, mm -hmm. right? And the kids said, well, put it online. And I said, no, because I know you all will use all of your notes. And then how fair is that? So, um, there, you know, there's different uh, pedagogical ways of addressing that. Um, one of them that I've moved to when I put my geometry course first online um, is I used to have questions that required a lot of um, previous kind of memorization and practice. And then what I learned is that when I put them online, they can use Google, they can use notes. Um, and so how do I leverage, you know, good test taking with that option? Um, and one kind of thing that I discovered on my journey is that um, with these students that I have right now, whether they're children or adults, they're always going to have Google available. They are going to have a calculator in their back pocket all the time. And so I've changed my tests to be more problem solving approaches um, where I, you know, give a situation where they might have to use one of the formulas or rules that we have discussed in class, but I'm not even letting them know which formula or rule to use, um, or they might have to modify it. So for example, I, I did one where they had to create an ice cream cone um, for a serving of ice cream in those kind of prepackaged pre um, nutty bars. And they had to find the surface area of a cone. But uh, as you might know, the, um, the surface area also includes the circle part. But in an ice cream cone, you don't have that circle part. You just have um, the wrap around. And so 
in that task, they had to, you know, think about different surface areas, how much it's going to cost to make that waffle cone, um, and also take that portion of the formula out. And they had to justify their reasoning through images, through uh, writing, um, and kind of show their thinking. And I found that uh, the math actually got more rigorous when I gave them these kind of real world problems and let them use Google um, to solve it. I, I know that's a big kind of pedagogical shift, um, but it's one that I made in my journey that I have not looked back on at all. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, indeed. I, I, it, it will definitely increase their, um, it makes it real for them. Mm -hmm. um, how many of them can make that jump? I guess after a couple, <laughs> a couple of, <laughs> um, of questions like that. And I think when you move to anything online, you uh, you go slow, you pick one thing um, that you're willing to try, and you give a lot of grace to both yourself and your students in realizing that this situation isn't necessarily something anyone signed up for. Um, and, you know, how can you do it? Try one thing, be open to suggestions from your students about how, uh, how it went, and just kind of humanize the whole process and, um, I think you'll you'll find that it, it is a journey, and I'm always here to help brainstorm questions if you have others. Well, thank you so very much, Teresa. I appreciate your time and effort. You're very welcome. Good luck with your online learning. Thank you. Have a great day. Yes, you too. Yes, yes Teresa, I just wanted to ask you a question. Um, this is uh, very new to me. Uh, of course, I've taken classes online, very different than instructing online, and I teach special ed. So, is there some uh, techniques that you use my students that are struggling uh, um, academically or reading um, when I'm instructing them online? Because this is all new mm -hmm. to us in the last couple of weeks. You know, though, you know, we have to be at home doing different things. I teach the science and English, and I teach math. <laughs> Great. So you're uh, kind of a jack of all trades, aren't you? Um, yeah, pretty much. <laughs> so uh, I have I've had several students who teach mm -hmm. primarily um, groups of students um, who have IEPs or who are English yes. language learners, and they have actually mm -hmm. said that using these slides have helped students. Um, with expressing mm -hmm. their ideas because it really does mm -hmm. allow you to add emotion to things. It allows you, if you're okay. having um, trouble writing your thoughts out, you can usually find a clip mm -hmm. art image that describes what you're thinking okay. and paste that on. Um, some okay. students are very nervous about talking out loud, especially using the microphone. Mm -hmm. And so putting them in small groups of two is essentially a think okay. fair share and uh, they can okay. share ideas with one other person before coming to a whole group mm -hmm. and others really okay. prefer just the chat box. I'm not saying okay. to throw all these modalities at them at once, um, but mm -hmm. realize that you have a lot of these modalities available um, mm -hmm. and asking them to, you know, right in this box over here or put a clip art image there is something that's really accessible to our special learners. Okay. Okay. All right. All right. Yeah, this is going to be, this is new and this is going to, I think this is going to be a useful tool. And I think on one of the slides you were asking me how this change. And for me, I tend to think of less distractions because a lot of times children are easily distracted. It doesn't have to be just special ed, it could be gen ed too. And um, they'll be more focused, I think, in this way yes um, of learning so my adult mm -hmm. learners are sometimes i think teachers can be very very distracted um i you know in classes i know some people might be trying to grade assignments because that's due we we all have our our reasons to be distracted um but right. i purposefully in my classes do what i call an overload of of modalities and that's where i ask them in the chat box i want you to make connections to your personal lives Raise your hand if you're ready mm -hmm. to use audio, and that's for new ideas only. And on the slide, I okay. want pictures of how you're feeling right mm -hmm. now. So I'm overloading okay. them on purpose so that they stay okay. engaged in my slides and mm -hmm. in this discussion we do, because usually there's something that someone wants to do that way. Okay. 
Okay. All right. Wonderful. Wonderful. This was really an eye opener for me. And thank you for taking the time to teach us all this. And, you know, so it, it teaches us some of our kids may be struggling in different areas. Like we were just struggling just right now, you know, um, trying to navigate our uh, way around the system. Yeah. And I hope that I showed and I modeled how to be calm and patient, even though mistakes might happen mm -hmm. and things like audio yeah. might not work. And um, I hope that mm -hmm. I modeled that in such a way that you will also uh, do that with your students. Oh, yes. Yes, you did. Thank you so much. You're welcome. appreciate that. Laura, okay. you had your hand up. Uh, can I answer something for you? Hi, Teresa. Thank you for doing this. You're very welcome. I have a quick question. Mm -hmm. uh, how can we use this software, this website that we're using to communicate with you? Uh, so Google Slides, first of all, is free, um, and it's available to just about anyone because you have a link. The other thing I'm using oh, no. is Blackboard Collaborate Ultra. Um, and that's our yeah. web conferencing tool. My school uh, subscribes to Blackboard, so they already have the infrastructure built for this. If your school doesn't, um, I would recommend using Zoom, Z-O-O-M. Um, and right now, I believe they are offering free subscriptions to educators and uh, lifting their restrictions that they had previously about like 30 minute um, windows. So you can get a lot more access that way. It also does breakout rooms just like Collaborate Ultra. Okay, another question. Mm -hmm. Do you have a specific time to meet with your students? Yes, so synchronous means that we are live. Just like today we met at 9 a.m., I would have my classes yes. at a specific date and time. Um, and I have students from all over the world, so it, it's a different time zone for them, but we're all in here together. Okay, okay. Thank you very, very much. You're welcome. Someone had posted a question, will I have access to the slide presentation? You already do. Uh, you can make a copy of it. You can share it. Uh, I'll put recordings up on Twitter as soon as I have uh, them, you know, put together. Thank you yeah, very much. Really wonderful. Yeah. Thank you so much. And uh, I'm a first year teacher and uh, I anyway had, did have my challenges and now this is really added to my challenge. Um, but yes, you know, you did demonstrate so much of patience and I know what I need to keep in mind when I'm taking an online session. So thank you so much. And definitely you'll see me in the other sessions too, because um, I am not feeling very comfortable about doing this. Um, the subject that I teach is cybersecurity, mm -hmm. and uh, normally I have 30 machines uh, in my class, and I demonstrate something online, and the students are working on their own while I move around and help them uh, where they have got stuck as to, you know, where they need to go and search for the settings. So my challenge is going to be making slides, uh, making multiple slides, and actually marking uh, in multiple places where they need to click and what to do mm -hmm. because I wouldn't have access to their machines. So is there any way that that can be done? I use uh, a program called Screencastify. It's free. I think it's uh, owned by Google. Um, I'll type it in the chat box for spelling. Uh, oh, okay. And what yeah, because it, like, my... oh, go ahead. Yeah, because in my um, classes, what we do is uh, our school district doesn't give access to um, many tools and many websites. So we use uh, virtual environments that are either given by uh, Virginia Cyber Range. Mm -hmm. So I look for some kind of tool that they should be able to log, they, sh they would be able to install in that virtual environment too. Yeah, so uh, some suggestions I have is if you want them to learn through direct teaching, like you want to show them where to click, um, where to move, mm -hmm. um, that you use Screencastify. It will take a video screenshot of your screen and what you're doing. You can talk over it um, and you can post the link. The nice thing about doing that is students who are like, I already know how to do this. Why am I going to watch this video? Like they can kind of fast forward a little bit for some of those things and they can um, make that more student led. Um, 
but if you have more direct instruction about you know slides that you've created that you need to go over first you can insert those links and then they can continue working collaboratively in the slides just like you did and you saw in slide four okay 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 thank you so much Teresa. thank you're you. very welcome glad you could come I have another session at one o'clock if anyone wants to redo this session, but it will be a duplication of what we already did. And starting on Monday, there will be new strategies. Um, so if you're looking to do something a little different, I'll try and put those in. If there are no further questions, I'm gonna go play Barbies with my daughter or Minecraft with my son. Um, so I'll log off, but uh, thanks everyone for coming and I hope you can use these strategies.